Hi. Uh, so when I was in my uh, late 20s, I had a breakthrough, which was exciting. And it was a really a, a genuine eureka moment. And the eureka moment was that everyone needs to have a new eureka moment, which is a strange eureka moment, right? Um, uh, and even more so is sort of a two-parter that they needed to have a eureka moment that I designed. So I'll, I'll explain. Uh, right around that time, uh, I, I was an artist designer, I still am, but I turned my attention to a problem and I, I wanted to figure it out and it was a little bit outside of my skill set. In fact, it was a lot outside of my skill set. I wanted to uh, end violence against women. And I know you hear that and you think, how honorable on one hand. On the other hand, how ridiculous on the other hand. How can this one guy, uh, an artist no less, who doesn't even have health insurance for himself, uh, plan to help all the women in the world? Uh, kind of kooky. But I thought I had a couple skill sets that could take a shot at it. And from my perspective, this violence against women had been going on forever, and society clearly hadn't found a way to deal with it. So. You know, I wasn't married yet, and I have any kids. So I had some time to, to put to this to see if I could figure it out because it, it, was, it was an important issue to me. And this is why. Uh, one of my best friends from uh, college, a really smart, funny, talented woman, confided in me this story when she was uh, in high school. She uh, said she was leaving a party, and she was kidnapped and raped by a group of men over the course of a weekend. And when they finally let her go at the end of the weekend, she gets home, makes her way home, and her parents don't believe her. The only way her parents could deal with this horrific act was to blame her, to say that she must have brought it on herself. That was their only way to process this. Now, when she told me the story, it shook me to my core more than any story had ever shaken me to my core. And not because I didn't know there was violence against women in the world, of course. I knew there was violence against women in the world everywhere in the world. Uh, what shook me to my core was that here it was now being you know, inflicted on someone that meant a lot to me. And that coupled with the fact that her parents didn't know how to do right by their daughter, right? That society had not provided them with a skill set to deal with this horrific crime. And as a result, these guys were never uh, pursued, uh, arrested, or punished for the horrific act. And I also thought about them. I thought, these guys must have been able to rationalize in some way what they did to my friend, right? Uh, how else could you do it? How could you live with yourself if you, uh, unless you could rationalize this away? So I put my mind to this uh, because Again, I didn't see society finding a way to fix this. Uh, so after she told me the story, I thought about it every day for weeks, months, and beyond, uh, trying to make sense of it for myself. And what it came to was that we, we, we live in this world that has gained this passive acceptance for uh, the hypersexualization of young women, right? And then on the other end, we have uh, this network of crisis centers for victims of sexual violence. But then we don't have, at least from my perspective, a functional deterrent uh, to stop people from growing up to become predators. So that was the part I thought I could do something with because uh, I'm a guy and I grew up with just brothers. And even though I had girlfriends through high school and, and beyond, uh, I, I realized I didn't have an appreciation until this moment that uh, women live in a very different world than I do. And it's, it was quite a, a lesson to learn when you're in your late 20s. Uh, it's a lesson I should have learned a lot earlier, that women live under the constant threat of violence and, and live their lives very differently than I. You know, with just brothers I grew up, I didn't have any curfew. My brothers and I came and went as we wanted uh, any time of the day or night, and our parents didn't worry about, them, about us. But women clearly didn't have that opportunity. Um, or if they did, they were at risk. So. What could I do? How could I tackle this? And, and, and what was I going to tackle? So I decided that what these guys who, who did this crime were capable of doing, uh, they were able to do it because they didn't see my friend as human, basically. That's all I could come up with. 
that it, if they had a, a, an appreciation for her, an understanding, a moral uh, consideration for her, they would have never done this, right? So I decided that's what I would try to do. I would try to find a way to put out into the world for young men, boys, who are coming of age, uh, a, a sense for greater appreciation and moral consideration, understanding, knowledge about women. And if they have that grow up, they would never do these crimes. That was my idea as an art school grad. So, uh, so how do I go about doing this? Um, what I decided after a lot of trial and error um, was that what was needed was a, a way to create conversation between boys and girls, men and women. Because that's how I learned uh, to gain my appreciation for my girlfriends and my female friends was through conversations, learning about them, getting a, a sense for what their lives are really like. Even though it clearly was limited in some areas, I, I had never had an impulse to do it, what these guys did, what people do to women all the time. So maybe this needed to be passed on. And the way I saw it to be done was to do it through conversation. How do I create conversations between guys and girls? Conversations that had never been happened before that allows guys to voluntarily enter into a conversation where they gain an appreciation for the life of a woman. So I came up with a variety of different ideas and some that were better than others, but then I had this epiphany, I had this breakthrough. Uh, it, it was a, a eureka moment and, and it was it. I knew it was it, like any eureka moment, a real one you feel in every uh, cell of your body. And it clearly was gonna be the answer uh, for this, this problem and uh, this is it. Uh, and I know what you're thinking, that's exactly what you thought I was gonna put on the screen. Um, <laughs> uh, clearly, the answer to stop violence against women is uh, a canvas case with a Velcro snap uh, to uh, keep a woman's menstruation-related products from breaking the bottom of their bag. Um, well, this is what I came up with, and I'll, I'll explain how, how I, I thought it would work. So it is a, a canvas case with a Velcro snap, a Vinnie's tampon case, and inside of a Vinnie's tampon case is a Vinnie's handy period chart so a woman can keep track of her monthly cycle. And on the back of the handy period chart is a, uh, you can keep track of your pals and their periods. So uh, your friends, you know, you know if they're what their favorite chocolate is, what their favorite tampon, you just write that in. You could play the uh, psychic skills memory game because now that you're tracking your period, you can start guessing when your next period's gonna come. And, and I put my email there as well in case you needed a new chart when you filled yours out. Uh, so uh, my, my plan was this, that I was gonna make um, Vinny's tampon cases and I was gonna give them away for free uh, on the streets of New York where I lived. Uh, and I was gonna do this for five years uh, I decided I, I needed to give myself five years to do this because it seemed like an unusual thing to do and I wanted to make sure I did it and didn't back out so I just made it this big, okay, I'll do it for five years. And uh, that's what I did. So for five years, I gave out Vinny's tampon cases. But the trick was, right, I wanted a conversation to happen. So how, how does this gonna work? So my, my vision was that if a guy saw a Vinny's tampon case in a woman's purse, he would wanna know why a guy named Vinny is on a tampon case. Uh, and he would be willing to talk about it. Why? Because this is the first time in the history of menstruation products that there are not euphemistic colors, there's a, a man's face on it, it says tampon in big words, and it's by Vinny. And part of my psychological theorizing here was that Vinny, which is my name, and I'm happy with my name, uh, is, is a name a lot of people associate with their car mechanic or something like that. So if a guy saw this in, in a woman's purse, he would think, wow, Vinny, Vinny's gotten over his phobia of uh, the monthly cycle. If Vinny can get over it, <laughs> I should be able to get over it too, right? That was you know, one of the varying uh, psychological thoughts. But I also, by putting my face on it, I, I could represent it. And I knew that this was an issue, a topic, a taboo subject with women and men. So if it had a good representative, people would be more willing to maybe come around to it. So how do I get it into women's purses? They, you know, a woman had to want to have one of these, right? So, uh, so what I did is uh, to get people to find out that I had one, I uh, wore a shirt every day that said, I'm Vinny, ask me for a free Vinny's tampon case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and now, now you laugh, and that's exactly the reaction that I wanted. But I didn't want people to just laugh. I wanted them to actually ask me. Uh, because, and it's important that they're free, because in talking, doing research about this project, you know, the issues that women had with tampons were what? They, were, they broke in the bottom of your bag, uh, of course, uh, but they were expensive, and they were sometimes toxic. So I didn't want to add to the expense, so I decided they'd be free. And also, if they were free, I would be beyond approach, right? So if a woman thought I was just, yeah, another guy co-opting uh, another part of the woman's body, yeah, yeah, thanks for nothing, guy. Uh, if they were free, they, they couldn't come at me, right? I could, they would just be, I'm going to get these conversations going by hook or by crook. And I wasn't just going to give them out willy-nilly because I couldn't afford that, right? I'd run out of stock really fast. And also, people get it and throw it out. And even in New York, which seems accepting of many things, a guy standing on a corner in a shirt like this, handing out tampon cases for free, any menstrual product, would be met with some skepticism, right? Uh, <laughs> So uh, I didn't want people to throw things out, so it, it was important that the, the rule I made, that every day I would give these out for five years, and I'd wear these shirts, but I'd only give them to someone if they requested one. So the request would simply work like this, was my theory, that they would see me on the street, or on the subway, or in a restaurant, and they'd see my shirt, and they'd want to know what that was, and they'd, they'd say, Vinny, wh what's your shirt about? And um, I'd say, uh, I have a, you know, I pull out this, which is the tampon case, and this is what I did thousands of times. I said, I make this. It's a, it's a, tamp it's a canvas case with Velcro snap to keep a women's menstruation-related products from breaking the bottom of their bag. <laughs> and if it was a woman, they would smile and they got it immediately, which was very gratifying to me because I had no idea when I started what the reaction would be. And so the women just go, oh, can I have it? Yeah, I'm free, no problem, take it. Guys were a little less quick to grab. Uh, <laughs> uh, they were, as, they were equally as interested. I got as many guys talking to me uh, as I did women. Uh, but when, they, when I pulled it out of my pocket, you could feel them step back a little bit because this is still a very new realm for them and they didn't think it was clean. But when, <laughs> but when I explained to them how it worked, uh, they were cool with it. So uh, doing this for you know, five years, I had created a whole wardrobe of clothing because I couldn't wear the same shirt every day. I uh, clearly had winter jackets as well. Um, and uh, the, the reaction was great. And again, I didn't know what the reaction would be, but it was fantastic. Uh, people were so enthusiastic about the cases, and uh, they just went like wildfire. Everywhere I went, I was giving out tampon cases. It was, it was a really great experience, because I was having these <laughs> uh, great, great conversations with people always, no matter where I went. And because I was doing this, and women were so happy that some guy was finally just saying enough with this. We're tired of this. We're tired of, of no one talking about this. We're so happy you are. Uh, that they felt like they knew me. And so they would start talking to me about their period. Now, <laughs> and this would happen at the airport, on the subway, in our restaurant. Um, and I went to art school. I knew nothing about any of this. But after doing this for all those years, for five years, I got to know a lot. Uh, about this, so uh, some more pictures of, of people with the cases. So eventually, stores contacted me saying they wanted to carry them, uh, and I decided to break my rule of giving them away for free because a friend of mine who had a store in Virginia said, look, my customers are not gonna ride the subway and run into you in Brooklyn, so why don't you let me sell them here and you can have those conversations happen in Virginia as well. So I relented if stores would sell them for $5, and before uh, I knew it, they were being sold all over the world. Uh, in, in every kind of store, um, which was great. And again, now that I was selling in stores, I was able to do these boxes, and I kept the car theme going for guys, because again, this was to create conversations, right? So the guys would see it in the bottom of a bag. Then I was on television, every magazine covered this. Uh, it became a, a, a mini phenomenon. And uh, in five years, I gave over 10,000 tampon cases out for free on the streets of New York. And uh, now there are over a quarter of a million women around the world that use a Vinny's tampon case every month. And I'm very proud of that because these tampon cases last a long time. They're built to last, they're guaranteed for life. And uh, <laughs> if a woman has it in their bag, uh, and, they, and I know they have them for 10 years, I get letters now from girls who got it when they were in eighth grade saying, I still have it. So if they had 10 conversations about their tampon case with strangers, with friends, then that's three million conversations that would have never happened before. Uh, I got fan mail 
I never expect to get in fan mail. I've gotten thousands upon thousands of letters from young girls who can't wait to have a period so they can have a Vinny's tampon case, <laughs> to women who are postmenopausal who are bummed that they don't have a period anymore so they can't use it. So uh, it was a really great experience and uh, I encourage you that if you have an epiphany to follow it, uh, even if it's way outside of your skill set. I mean, I, I was an artist and you know, I know I created all these conversations, but had I been concerned about that, I would have never done this. And it ended up being truly the best experience of my life. So thank you very much.